let's take a look at where the kinematics equations for constant acceleration come from. We've verified these relationships experimentally. If we have position and we want to figure out the velocity, we take the slope. And if we have velocity and we want to figure out the acceleration, we take the slope. And then going the other way, if we have acceleration and we want the change in velocity, we take the area under the curve. And if we have velocity and we want the change in position, we take the area. Using these relationships, we can come up with all the kinematics equations we need for constant acceleration. So let's start down here. We have acceleration versus time, and it's constant acceleration. You can see that by the uh, uh, flat line that just stays at A equals A, whatever that value is. So what we want to do is figure out the area, the change in velocity in some time T. And so you can see we have the area of a triangle, and area is the change in velocity, and it is the height of the triangle, A, times the width of the height, triangle, T. And so the change in velocity is AT. But what if I want to know the velocity at a specific time? I have to add the initial velocity onto it. And so the equation of this line becomes V equals V0 plus AT. And so that is the equation of this line derived using the area under the curve idea. Well, can we start here with the velocity and then get the equation for position as a function of time? Sure, it's a little tougher. Let's take a look. And so I want to figure out the change in position in some time t. And so I have a trapezoid, and I want to get the area of this trapezoid. And that might be a little tougher, but not too bad. And so again, the area is the change in position, so we'll have to add our initial position on when we're done. And so the area of a trapezoid is the average height times the base. And so we have the initial height is V0. What is the final height here? And so that would be whatever my velocity is at time t. And so that would be v0 plus at. And so the area under the curve here is the average height, v0 plus v0 plus at over 2 times the base t. So we have v0, v0 plus at. So that's the initial height of the trapezoid, final height. And then we divide by 2 to get the average height. And then the base is just time t. And so we need to carry this out, simplify it. And so I get a 2v0 plus at. But this is over 2. And then this is times t. And so this 2 is going to go. And so I get v0t plus, here I have at over 2 times t again. And that's usually written as one-half at squared. You could also try this by breaking this up into a rectangle and a triangle, where the triangle has a height only of at, AT but this is a more straightforward way if you know what a trapezoid is. And so our position curve is, well, this is the change in position. So if I have some initial position, I have to add that on there. Remember from the motion lab, the velocity graph doesn't tell us where to start. Somebody has to give that to me. And so I have x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And you should be able to do this, especially if you're interested in doing physics. Uh, it's about creating the relationships from basic principles. As the famous physicist Feynman said, what I cannot create, I do not understand. And so see if you can create these equations uh, on your own.